Honestly, there hasn't been, besides that little like trickery that we just engaged in, take the derivative, take the integral, there hasn't been a ton of like calculus talk about how to get these power series. Like you might have very big questions about how does one even get a power series if it's not of this nice geometric form? Shouldn't we still be like legitimately able to get a power series for other functions that are not quite like that? Is it always up to us to come up with some kind of algebraic trickery to help us get there? And the answer is we can actually find a power series for basically every function you've ever seen in your life. There's some exceptions. But we start, we're going to be talking about uh, constructing a power series from scratch today, not necessarily with geometric series. So let's just recall that by a power series we mean this. And of course C0, we're being a little fast and loose with that like someone mentioned in the warm-up, but we'll go with that. My first question is what's P of 0? If you plug in zero to the series, the infinite series, the entire series, yeah, you get C zero. So I, I want to make sure you're, you're clear here. If you have some function and you don't know the power series for it, say, you do know the first constant, that, that C zero, don't you? How do you get it? You just plug in. You want to know C zero. You just plug in zero to your function, and you'll get, you'll get C zero for your, your polynomial. And I want to make sure you're clear. You know the power series, the entire power series for a function, if you know all of the C's, right? If you can figure out all the C's, then you know the power series. So we're just going to try and chip away at them. So C0 is easy to find. Now I'd like you to consider P prime of X for a second. First of all, what is P prime? What does P prime look like? That is, take the derivative of this, term by term. What do we get? Nothing. C1 plus 2, C2x plus some other stuff. And what is, what happens if you plug 0 into that? Do you see that all that remains is C1 if you plug 0 into that? Hmm. Maybe from that, we can figure out what the C1 value is if we know that the first derivative of our function evaluated to 0. What about P double prime? Use P prime and take another derivative. Go ahead. What do we get? 2C2 plus 6C3x. OK. Well, what do you get when you plug 0 into that? 2C2. Using these relationships here, 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 Etc. We're going to be able to solve for the constants we can, if we just know an infinite number of derivatives of a, of a function at a point. What about p triple prime? Take this derivative here of this. Yeah, 6c3 plus some other stuff that involves x. So if you plug in 0, you'll get 6c3. Follow so far? But now the goal is, like I said, if I give you a function, and in a minute we're going to do a couple functions that don't appear to be geometric at all. Like, you know, say we do, we'll do sine x today, for example. Say I give you sine x. Do you think you could figure out what, at zero, what sine of zero is? What, si what sine pri, what the derivative of sine is at zero? What the second derivative of, of sine is at zero? Yeah, all of those things are known. You, you could give me, you could just, with a yawn, give me an infinite list of derivatives of sine at zero, right? So do you think you could come up with all the constants here as well by solving each one of these equations? The answer is, yeah, I think we could. So in general, let me show you how that would be done. We'll just solve for the constants now. So this is what we just had on the previous slide. I just am copying it over here. Do you agree? We said P, zero, P of zero is C zero. P prime of zero is C1, P double prime is 2C2. Does that represent what we just came up with on the right side of the last slide? Just copying it over here. <coughs> so solving each one of those for the constant is not super hard here. That means that if you'd like to know what C0 is, 
It's just f of zero. Just take your function and plug in zero. You'll get the first constant in your expansion. Not a huge surprise here. C1 is just f prime of zero. What's, what's, now here they get interesting. What's C2? Of course. How do you solve for C2 there? It's not going to be P double prime. It's going to be, yeah, over 2, right? So would you like to know the second constant? It'll always be, remember, we're, just, we're not talking about any particular function here. In general, it will always be f double prime divided by 2. Now I want you to, and actually it was like a little bit of a mistake for us to multiply this 6, for example, in the previous slide. I want you to think really about where that came from. Where did that 6 come from? Unpack it. It was the derivative of c cubed. Originally, it was c3 uh, times x cubed. Do you remember that originally? So how did we get this 6? C3. We took two derivatives, three derivatives. And we did uh, the, the three, and then times the two, right? But you remember that? So this is, I just want to unpack where these numbers are coming from. And I've already started writing them that way. You said f double prime divided by two. But do you mind if I write it as two times one? Where do you think this is going? Yeah, in general, what is, what is, the coefficient on the nth degree term in the, in, the, in the series? And the answer is, it's the nth derivative evaluated at your center, zero for, for now, divided by n factorial. Yeah? This is of, of supreme importance for what we're doing today, this right here. The coefficient, this is a huge revelation. The coefficient on x to the 20th in your power series, if you want it just immediately, right now, you don't have to you know, go out any, you don't have to go piece by piece. We can just tell you what the coefficient is. It's the 20th derivative of your function, evaluate, evaluated at 0, divided by 20 factorial. That's the coefficient on x to the 20th in your power series. Do you understand now that we can do this for any function as long as that function? has an infinite number of derivatives. And so that's why I said is for almost every function, I said just a few minutes ago, for almost every function you've ever met in your whole life, we can do this. Right? Because almost every function that you've met in high school has has been infinitely differentiable. All the analytic functions. Um, so yeah, I mean we can certainly think of some functions that are not very well behaved, but we have to think hard about them. Most most of the functions we like sine, cosine, tangent, the natural log function, exponential functions, polynomial functions, rational functions are infinitely differentiable at places where they're continuous. So this should, this should be what we say now. This is the definition of what we mean by Taylor series. And this is called, this is our first encounter with these words, the Taylor series. So let's just look at this, and this is, looks like a mess, but just understand that this is in fact what we've just said f of a, isn't that the first constant? We said that would be true. Didn't we say the second constant would be f prime of a? Didn't we say the third, the third constant would be f double prime of a over 2? These are the things we solve for. The third constant is f triple prime over 6, or 3 factorial, etc. And in general, it's going to be our power series coefficient will be f, the nth derivative of f. Evaluated at a over n factorial, so this should this should look like look familiar after our last slide. Now the only thing I've done a little different on this slide is I've made this not centered at zero, but in general centered at any a. So in general, this is the center evaluated at the center, whatever a is. In our previous case, that was zero. And if it's zero, then it's x to the n for centered at zero. People, yeah, so there's the tidy, quick version right there, right? If it happens to be called, a lot of times we'll just say the Taylor series centered at zero. But sometimes people, if you, people say, give the McLaurin series, that's what they mean. It's this, this special case where we're centered at zero. There you go. 
And then we said this in the warm-up even already, that if you stop at uh, a particular partial sum, n, you're going to get a polynomial order n. It'll have n plus 1 terms, perhaps. Some of them might zero out, though, so it can be careful. And we, we might call that the, the Taylor polynomial of order n. I'll leave that up there for just a minute here. Just to digest all that. There's a lot going on here. And this is, if you understand truly the slide, this is this is the lesson today in the on, in one one slide. So we're just gonna play around with the consequences of this now. Actually, find the uh, find the Taylor series for and start doing it for a bunch of for a bunch of functions. Yeah, feel free to grab some refreshments here. Need help unpacking any of the symbols? It's always good once in a while to back away from all this and just be like, wow, I'm really smart or something, right? You guys feel that right now? I mean, you guys think, look at this. There's basically no numbers on this slide, right? Yeah, there's a zero, there's a, there's a two, the there's a two factorial. Okay, I got it. All right, but, but the point is, I mean, this is, this is a dense mathematical expression. There is a lot to understand here. This is a, a function that's represented by an infinite series with x's and powers of the factorial. You need to understand infinite derivatives to get this. But there's a lot here. You've arrived, my friends. Okay. Or you, maybe we'll give you give you a little day here. Maybe you're not quite there. It sure seems like you're right. Okay. Yeah. The journey is not always smooth. It looks like fat. All right. So I think I've given you sufficient time to digest this. So let's just play around with a few examples now. Oh wait, historical interlude. Don't you wish you had a wig like a wig like that? Oh, and I have one uh, math-related meme as well for you. Here you go. You don't know all these results yet. These are these. We'll, we'll start working on getting these the results. But. All right. So let's start with uh, one that we've done before. I always like to kind of do one that we know how to do another way first, just to prove that this is working. Uh, this one won't be the most interesting one ever. But we'll start by centering it at 0, and then we'll center it at negative 2. So, uh, all right, you can check that this is, like I said, this is, this is very simple. In fact, this is the warm-up problem, right? We already know how to get this using techniques from yesterday. Let's see if this whole Taylor expansion thing works, though. All right, so what do we say? What do we need to construct the series? We said we need all the derivatives of our function in this particular first case here at 0. So let's start t differentiating this. This sounds like a terrible idea, but let's do it. Well, first of all, f of 0, f of x is 6 over 1 minus x. So f of 0 is what? 6. So we need that. We need that. Uh, f prime of x is equal to now, see, now things get a little crazy. Take the derivative of that. Go ahead. What do you get? You get 6 times 1 minus x to the negative second. Oh, wait. Times negative 1. Evaluate that to f prime of 0 is then what? Negative 6. Okay, f double prime of x. You might not think this is going to be fun to keep taking derivatives. And in some cases, it will be absolutely terrible. But this one's not bad. This one's not bad, actually, even though it looks like it might be terrible. What do we get? Negative, well, up, up front. We get 12, 1 minus x to the negative third. Oh, wait, negative again? Oh, actually, uh, this first one is, well, let's make sure we get this right here. 
This first one was negative first, so that comes down. Oh, so that one's, they're both positive, actually, aren't they? Uh, the chain rule, right, we get, this is negative one comes down. And then we have a negative one from the inside that we multiply by. On both of them. So what do we get here? F double prime of zero. 12. F triple prime. We won't go much further than this for now. I guess we'll just go here. So this gets, we get negative 36. Oh, wait, positive 36. X, uh, 1 minus x to the negative fourth. So f triple prime is at 0 is 36. OK, well, I think we're ready to write the series. And I don't think you'll be surprised for a what we get here. So we get uh, the first term. How, how does this go? The, t the, the function is equal to, or the Taylor series is 6 plus if you're reading from the previous slide, plus f prime times x minus the center, but in this case it's just x. Now, let's just, if we, if we were to stop there, what do we have right now? You know what this is? The first order approximation, which is called the, what did you say? Yeah, the, say it like you mean it. Yeah, the linearization or the tangent line, right? This is actually the tangent line, isn't it? I mean, if you go back to the previous slide, just for a, just for a split second here. Come on, where is it? There we go. Isn't this, stop here, isn't that just the tangent line? That's the definition. That's like point, point slope for the tangent line. You see that? I hope that's not unfamiliar to you. Okay. So that's where we are right now. Let's keep going. Plus, okay, now things get interesting. What's the next uh, coefficient? Yeah, it's y6. Yeah, it's 12 over 2 times x minus a, but again, a is to the second. a is 0, though. Plus, what's the next one? Yeah, 36 over three factorial, x to the third, plus dot, 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 right? So in the end, this is like the most boring series I could possibly start with. It's just exactly what Caleb wrote on the board earlier. It is what we, th we thought we would expect. It's six plus six x plus six x squared plus six x cubed plus et cetera, right? Now, we can also write that in summation notation, eh, whatever, okay, but all the stuff we've been doing applies. Uh, okay. Let's do, um, I want to show you, we're going to, maybe I'll wait to do at negative 2, um, because I'd like to show you sine x quickly too. Okay. Let's see if we can do that one before we. So uh, f of x is sine x. <clears throat> it says just construct a power series for f. It doesn't say where, so if, that, if that's the case, then center it where you like. We'll center it at 0 just because that sounds nice. It sounds easy. Uh, there will be times you might be thinking, is there ever a time I don't want to center at zero? Yeah, like sometimes a function isn't defined at zero. For example, when we find a power series eventually for the natural log function, you can't center it at zero, right? You can't even evaluate it at zero. So what's f of zero? Anyone? Good. f prime is, of course, cosine. So f prime of zero is f double prime, actually this is easier than the last one, this is fun, is negative sine x. So what do we get there? <coughs> Zero still. And then f triple prime, negative cosine. So we get negative one. What about the fourth derivative? Ah, uh, do you see anything happening? <coughs> All right, so the fifth derivative is 
one, and I, I think if you haven't seen it already, starting right here, we start repeating these again, don't we? That's exciting. Okay, so here we go. So f of x equals, there's a lot of zeros here, right? Zero plus one times x plus zero over two factorial times x squared. We'll reduce all those. We'll get rid of the zeros, I promise. Minus 1 over 3 factorial, x to the third, plus 0 over 4 factorial, x to the fourth, plus 1 over 5 factorial, x to the fifth. So what are we getting here? Let's actually zero some of those things out. Looks like we're getting x. What's going away? All the, all the even powers are going away. We get x, we get negative x cubed over 3 factorial, we get, do you see a pattern yet? Yeah, it's all the odd powers over, so x to the odd number over that odd number factorial, and alternating signs, right? Yeah? Cool. That makes me think, too, how are you going to remember that? You can redrive it every time you need it, I guess. It's not too bad. Um, but how are you going to remember that? Well, one, one easy way to remember that is the fact that sine is what kind of function? What symmetry does it have? Odd. Uh, so it makes sense that we get uh, it's a, the sum of odd powers. It would make no sense if it was the sum of any even powers, right? So this is pretty powerful to think about the fact that every function can be written as a polynomial is a big, a huge idea. There's so much more we can say, but I know we need to close out here. Uh, so here's, let me, let me put that, this slide up here. And I'll get RBC going.